Welcome back, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the bucket list or bucket essentials, if you will. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the things you should get in your bucket when you first get started off. I know a lot of you guys who are watching this channel are either interested in carpentry or you guys are apprentices, so um, I know a lot of you guys don't have a lot of money when you guys first get started off. I remember only being able to afford like a pair of Lyman pliers, and that was a really big deal for me when I first got started. So in this video, I wanna talk about what are some of the things you should have in your bucket, in, your, in the Connex, that's gonna be like your home base, because sometimes you're gonna have tasks where you're not gonna do this thing every day, but you need to have these tools on site, because as carpenters, our job is to adapt and evolve to whatever's going on on the job site, not necessarily be like one track minded, right? So sometimes you might be doing siding and then you may be pulled off because, uh, you know, we have a priority uh, somewhere else where now you have to do um, handrail. So you have to be able to have, you know, a certain amount of tools within the vicinity that you're not gonna have to go run off and go get them from your car if it's you know far away. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what some of the essentials you need in your bucket so you can be productive uh, carpenters. Hope you guys enjoy, let's get into it. The reason why I'm making this video, even in the first place, is because I broke one of my like carpenter cardinal sins. I was working downtown, it's only gonna be for a short amount of time, and so I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go and just have my bags, my normal tools. You know, I'm doing concrete, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I just brought my bags, my hard hat, and ready to go. Well, throughout the day, I'm working, and then after break time, I sit my bags down, I come back after break, and then my tape measure is gone. Usually that wouldn't be a problem because a lot of job sites, your car is, you know, two feet, I mean, 100 feet away, maybe 200 feet away, it's in a parking lot, it's really easy to uh, access, but on this job site, uh, the parking structure or parking is about 10 minutes away. So that's a 20 minute round trip. So that means you have to be missing from your task and gone for 20 minutes to find your tape measure or try to fake it till you make it until lunchtime and then grab it. So either way you're gonna lose. Either you're gonna lose uh, three quarters of your lunch or you're gonna and be useless for a couple hours or you're gonna have to do a walk of shame and try to either go to your car or beg somebody for extra tape if they have one or try to share something. So that was something I did. I know I'm a journeyman. I still make these you know, mistakes sometimes. Uh, I feel like an idiot. So that's why I'm making this video for you guys to reiterate, always bring extra stuff because you never know when you're gonna need it or you never know when you know someone's gonna borrow your tape measure or uh, I don't know, speed square, and then never give it back. This happens all the time, whether it be malicious or accidental, it doesn't matter. That's what I'm gonna get into, what you should have in your bucket. So this is my uh, bucket I have right here. If I'm going on a job site that might be kind of hectic or I don't know, I'm not familiar with who's there. A lot of times, if you're on a job site with a lot of different subs, different trades, you wanna be more cautious. I know sometimes you might be in a job where it might be only your crew and you know everybody, but a lot of times if you're gonna be on a crew with a job site you've never been to, bring a bucket where you know you can put in a connex where other trades are not allowed to go into. Cause sometimes bringing uh, a pack out system or something else, that's just too much space taken up for a connex. And so it's easier to throw one of these in a corner and you have all your stuff with you, opposed to trying to lug around, you know, 200, 300 pounds worth of tools. So I bring my uh, a bucket to the job site and it's gonna have a couple things. One of the major things you wanna bring is different types of hammers. Now right here, I have a stiletto uh, framing hammer. I got the hockey tape right here for the grip, for in the rain. And then I also have a simple Vaughn flat face hammer, smooth face, so that when you're doing siding or trim work, you're not gonna be damaging it with that waffle head that the stiletto has. So you wanna make sure you have another one on hand because so often you might be pulled from one task to another one and you wanna be able to transition easily from one thing to another, just running out to the conics and grabbing something. But now if it's a 20 minute trek, 10 minutes to somewhere to your, to your truck, 10 minutes back, that makes the situation a lot more difficult. So the Connex usually is gonna be around five minutes away from your job, wherever you are. It's usually centralized in the middle. That makes it a lot more easy. Like, hey, let me go grab my finishing hammer real quick. And then, okay, go grab real quick, hurry up. That's always gonna be the 
the process when you're told to switch tasks. Hurry up, go from there, finish there, hurry up. Keep in your mind as an apprentice, you're always gonna to wanna to be told to hurry up, go to the next thing, and do it as efficiently and effectively as possible. Now, these next few items I've already spoken about before extensively in other videos, so I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. You're gonna need extra chalk box, pins for scribing or whatever, an extra speed square, and obviously an extra tape. Now, I had a subscriber hit me up and uh, give me an idea, and so I actually went and purchased it, and that is a climber's bag for your chalk box. So in the winter time, you can throw your chalk box in here. It's secure, now it's waterproof, so now you don't gotta worry if you're doing layout on the decks or if you're uh, the cut man and uh, you're doing the siding, you're do constantly you know, snapping lines. You can at least save yourself uh, and you're not putting your chalk box in a wet pouch, you know what I'm saying? So you at least give yourself a little bit more protection from the uh, inclement weather. Now, sometimes as carpenters, we're asked to uh, set steel, or we may have a different kind of concrete forms that need to use a crescent wrench. That's why it's important that you have one on you. I'm talking about one of the big dogs, and you have the point at the end so you can, you know. Uh, put uh, this in a hole to shimmy some steel over. I've had to do this countless times and so often because they're so heavy, people neglect to have these in their bags for obvious reasons because you know, you don't wanna have an extra five pounds just on you. Obviously it's not five pounds, but it's pretty fucking heavy. So you wanna have it near you, but not on you at all times. And this is something that usually gets neglected. I mean, they're fairly expensive. This is like $45 at Home Depot. You might be able to find it a little bit cheaper on Amazon, but you want to have these in your vicinity and make sure you mark it too because so often people like to just steal these. I don't know why these get stolen so often. People grab it for one task, run off, and they never give it back. So make sure you either uh, etch your name in here or something because these are worth enough money that it's worth, you know, trying to make sure nobody steals it. Like, you know, a couple pencils or a knife is one thing, but it's a pretty hefty investment, especially when you're first getting started off to have somebody steal this. Another thing we spoke about again in the tools for trades video and just the tools period for the bags, I spoke about bringing pencils. It's important that you have more than one because so often we jostle our buckets around or our tools around or our bags, throwing them down for break time, lunch time, and a lot of times the lead inside is cracked. So you might be just like sharpening, 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 and once it's tiny, once it's finally got to that point you want it, the lead falls out. That happens so often. So make sure you have a plethora of pencils on you because you're gonna need them, especially in the rain or if you have a lot of heavy stuff in your bags, like, you know, 16 dupes and you only have a couple pencils and they start getting real small. It makes things a lot easier if you just have enough. You should be blowing through pencils all the time. You know what I mean? Another thing is knives. These are another item, this and bits that gets stolen the most off jobs. And I think a lot of times, it's not the fact that it's like intentionally stealing. What happens is you have a person who might be doing something like moving lumber or you know cleaning up and someone might ask you, hey, give me a knife real quick. Someone will usually grab the nearest knife they see even if it's not theirs. I know that's terrible and you should never go into someone else's bags without asking, especially you don't have a relationship with that person. But people tend to grab the knife do the task with it, and the next thing you know, they go back and that those bags are gone now. So that person might be going to another task on the other side of the building, you don't know. So again, make sure you have extra because people are gonna people, but also, word of advice for apprentices, do not touch other people's bags unless you are explicitly told by a foreman or a superintendent because there's a special reason for it, but do not touch people's bags because people know exactly where they place their things, exactly where items are, and if they don't have it, they're gonna look dumb moving forward. So if, I, if I'm asked to go, hey, go move uh, this lumber, unload a truck real quick, I drop my bags, I put them in a corner, I don't just have them right in the middle of the floor, I put them in a corner, I go, and they say, okay, now I want you to go do layout upstairs. I'm gonna run to my bags, put them on as soon as possible, and then go run to that task. I'm not going to, every single time, check to make sure everything I had in my bags is still there. That should be obvious. That should be, that should be you know, a, a normal uh, situation where 
I left my bags a certain way, my bags should be that way when I come back to them. It's not always like that, especially when you have multiple trays on a job. So now there's no one to be held accountable. You know, I don't know if the plumber took it or a drywaller or electrician. So again, people are gonna people. So you wanna make sure that you have extra knives and extra bits. And a lot of times with the bits, what happens is somebody may grab, you know, uh, a drill you're using and you may have a T25 on there. They'll just take the T25 off, throw it in their pocket and then put, you know, a flathead or a Phillips on there. And now that T25 is gone. Now I've been on a lot of concrete jobs and one of the most important things to have is muck boots. Now sometimes you may think as a carpenter that you're not gonna get into the actual pour, you're fine, um, you know, that's a laborer's job. That's not a laborer's job, that's your job if you're asked to do it. And that's the most important thing you need to realize as a carpenter. Everything is your job. Whatever's asked of you as a general carpenter, you're gonna have to do that. So make get that out your mind of who's tasked what to do and who's an apprentice, who's a journeyman. I'm a journeyman, I do whatever I'm asked to do. If you're asking me to sweep eight hours a day, I'm gonna do it. Whatever the task is that I'm called upon, if they feel like it's worth it financially, I'm gonna do it. So make sure you have some good muck boots. These are uh, the chores. These are great boots. These actually, you know, um, are comfortable to wear. I know a lot of guys go really skimpy when it comes to boots. They might go to Walmart, they might go to Home Depot and buy the cheapest boots, but you're going to feel it. If you are in the poor and you have to do, um, you know, you have to slang um, the hoses, you have to carry those around. If you're doing that, that's gonna be a nightmare to wear, you know, really shitty boots. And one time, I'm gonna give you a little um, story for me. We were pouring something really simple. There's a couple of little ramps and uh, everybody was just standing around and the superintendent came through and said, hey, who's gonna jump in there and help uh, muck that uh, ramp? Well, no one had muck boots, no one had anything. And so we all kind of looked around. I just jumped into the pour. I just bought brand new boots. But sometimes I feel like I'm the type of person that I will give it a second and let people decide. But if no one's gonna decide, I'm just gonna do it. So I jumped into the pour. I completely thrashed my boots. I ruined them. But I'm gonna do that for the job. I mean, it sounds dumb, but I'm gonna do that because if no one else will do it, I will do it. So that gave me, you know, the thought like, hey, no matter what happens, if you're going to be at a concrete pour and it's not like, you know, something simple like sidewalks, if there's potential that you might have to jump in, always have your muck boots on you, make sure they're in your bucket, make sure they're in a place you can go grab them real quickly because you don't wanna do what I did and ruin, you know, a pair of 175 or $200 boots because, you know, you're the crazy one. Staying on that topic of concrete, you wanna make sure that you have a hand float and a margin trowel. A lot of times I go on jobs and we're doing little concrete things, something small where it doesn't require a mason to finish stuff, but then guys won't have any concrete tools whatsoever. Or they may have just got sent out or there's not enough, so now you're kinda of twiddling your fingers trying to you know, grab a piece of lumber and do, you know, finish it off. You wanna make sure you have this. And again, these are things that you also want to mark because these get you know, lost in the shuffle. A lot of times on concrete days, everybody's exhausted. Uh, you might have apprentices going around and they're cleaning these off, but if they're not marked, they don't know whose they go to, they're just throwing them away. So you wanna make sure that you have everything marked. Uh, scribe your name on there somewhere or you know, have some kind of different uh, highlighted paint on your stuff so people know what's yours, but make sure, I don't care how tired you are, you clean off your tools adequately. That's why you wanna bring a brush also. I don't have one shown right here, but I usually do have a brush. It gets stuff a lot more clean. Even though you may be able to scrape stuff off, that brush does a way better job. And you don't have to keep these things unless you wanna keep buying them over and over again because you were lazy and now there's buildup everywhere. Now you don't get the proper finish because there's buildup on the backside. So you just wanna make sure that you take care of your tools, bring a brush. Now, as an apprentice, I know this is a big investment. So again, when it comes to any kind of tool purchases, you're not expected to have everything all at once. You're expected to, over time, buy stuff as you go. So you have a full arsenal of tools you know, throughout the whole entire apprenticeship. Now, one thing I do think is important is to buy the basics first. You first get your first couple paychecks, you're buying the basics and then your backups, and then you start moving on to stuff like margin trials, uh, a good pair of uh, muck boots, and then also another huge thing that people downplay 
knee pads. Now, these knee pads right here are some of the best. I went to Home Depot, I bought the Husky brands, I, I went through every single type of knee pads. I'm talking about the ones that had the gel in there, all the different weird technologies. They have the Velcro. Velcro probably far the worst. Um, when you sweat, when they get wet, they just get ran out really easily. Even the buttons aren't that good. These are great. Uh, these are about, I think, 35 to 45 dollars depending on where you buy them. I like the fact they have this little hook right here and they come in here and they snap in. They, they fit a lot better. And even though this might look weird, this joint right here is great for your knees. I mean, when I wear them, I kind of forget to have them on. So when you're doing like finish work, uh, doors, um, when you're doing like trim work, it's great for your knees. So often we kind of just like clear the area off where we're working. If you're doing layout and you don't, you know, you don't look, you land on a rock or something you didn't see or a screw and it is brutal. So these come in handy all the time. Again, these are expensive for uh, uh, something you might not use all the time, but when you get the money, make sure you invest in a good pair of knee pads. Now for the last couple uh, little items, the little knick-knack items, you, you wanna make sure you have a Apex for your impact. Uh, these get lost all the time. So many times guys start a job, they might have five in their bags. End of the week, they have one, maybe, because people you know, put them in the drill, People grab said drill, they're doing a task, they run off or they leave it inside of the box. The next day, someone cr comes through, grabs it, they take it for their personal after the, the day. That happens all the time. You wanna have an extendo because sometimes, you know, that impact, uh, that apex isn't big enough. So you wanna make sure you have enough so you can have more leverage. You can combine multiple these together if you have to. I don't advise it, but you can. A lot of times they get more wobbly. The more you add together, you don't want to have, you know, five impacts, uh, apexes together to make an extendo. Just buy one. Uh, I also have a, a two foot one too. So for those tough places you really can't get by hand and you don't want to hammer, sometimes screw is the best option. Make sure you have an extended uh, apex. This right here is something that is treated like gold on most jobs. A lot of times your superintendent will buy a whole bunch of these. Everybody will load their bags. This is a 3 16th roto hammer bit. This is used to do a lot of down plates. This is when you use your rotor hammer, you're gonna drill into the two by four and into the concrete, put a piece of tie wire in there, and then a, a 16 dupe, you're gonna hammer it. These get broken all the time when you're doing a, a mass amount of like down plates. These tend to break. So these are treated like gold. Make sure you have a, uh, a separate one in your bags or in your bucket that no one else uses because in an emergency, you're gonna need one. And a lot of times people try to use quarter inch Quarter inch rotor hammer bits, they work, but it doesn't seem like you get the same hold and you have to use two uh, dupes. It's a lot more like they don't wanna go in properly. So again, if you can, when they have a lot of these on hand, grab one and tuck it in your bucket for safe use because eventually it's gonna come to a time when, you know, apprentice might burn up, you know, five or six of them in one day because they're coming at a weird angle, they're coming uh, and when they're when they're drilling, they're drilling too hard, might hit rebar and they break or they melt. So just make sure you have one because this makes your life that much easier. And the last thing besides the special things are little pry bars. These are great for windows, these are great for demo, for siding. If you have, you know, a piece of uh, material that's kind of push back and you wanna pull it forward and then screw it. These are great for that, for doors, to pry things up. Um, you wanna make sure you have these for finish. A lot, again, a lot of these items you're not gonna use every day, but it's great to have them on you because they make your life that much easier. Now, they have other brands. Um, the brand I use usually, this is from Home Depot. These are not the best. The brand I usually use is Titan. Uh, they're also, um, they, they second as like beekeeper like handles so they come like longer and they're great so overall if you have to just get these this little uh, brand right here at Buffalo Home Depot and again these are the items you want to have now I'm gonna get into some of the items that you know you wouldn't think of to have but I bring on my job because you never know and that being a couple protein bars and some jerky 
Now, we know life happens. Sometimes, you know, uh, you may have a concrete pour that goes 14 hours. End of the day, you're exhausted. All you do is want to go home. Make sure you have a little bit of food on you or something you can put in your bags. So if the concrete pour is going long, you don't have time to get lunch, you can go eat a little snack real quick while you're watching the pour or while you're actually in the pour and make your life that much easier. Um, sometimes you may wake up late and you don't have time to make your lunch. Everything's not prepared for you, you know what I'm saying? So you have something, a little bit of something in your, uh, your bucket so that you're not just dying out there. Again, you wanna make sure you set yourself for, up for success, so that's why you wanna prepare for whatever, you know, uh, troubles might come before they happen. And now this is the item that almost no one will tell you to bring, but as a carpenter who's been doing this for about six years, I'm gonna tell you, you need this, and I've seen some wild stuff happen on job sites, and that's a roll of toilet paper in a Ziploc gallon bag you can throw in your bucket, you set that there. You may not need this for seven, eight months, but trust me, when you need it and you don't have it, this is a thing of nightmares. I've been on a lot of jobs where, you know, they're just starting off, they have two porta potties, they have a small crew, everything's going great, and they ramp up and they don't, you know, either fix the cleaning schedule so that it ramps up also, or bring multiple porta potties. So now you might have what well, used to be. 10 guys using two porta potties. Now you have 30 guys using two porta potties and they're only cleaning once a week. And so often that you'll go in there, no TP in there. Or the nightmare scenario, you have to go really bad. You run in there, you check, you're already going. You check the nothing there. Now you're now you're missing some socks now. So it's something always you want to do before you before you go to porta potty. You check, see if there's TP in there. If there's not. You have your God scent right here. It's in your it's in your bucket. Usually the porta potty is next to Connex's, so you're in luck. This is what you need. Most people are not going to tell you this because you know uh, they haven't gone through some horrific events. But I've seen porta potties that are absolutely been thrashed, and there's no TP left. And you you, you just drank your coffee in the morning, and you you don't have no control. You have to go. So make sure you have. TP on you. This is your secret weapon that don't tell anybody you have it. Just keep it hidden. And for those who know, they know. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, everything I do on this channel is to try to help you guys be more efficient and learn from my mistakes. Uh, again, carpentry does not come easy to me. Uh, it's not like uh, something that's like second nature to me. I really have to work at this constantly. I constantly bash my head all the time. Um, I just want you to know that if you're struggling in the field and things aren't making sense, you are not alone. There are a lot of guys who don't have any prior experience and all this is really new. This is still new to me and I still find myself, you know, struggling sometimes. Uh, sometimes I get confused with angles or whatever because I don't get to do that that often. So if you feel like, you know, carpentry is becoming really difficult and it's not for you, give yourself a chance. Breathe. This stuff is not easy. A lot of guys become really efficient when they're 10, 15 years into it. And, and then some guys are naturally gifted. It's like basketball or anything else. I'm uh, more naturally inclined to like cooking. Um, that comes to me really easily. Uh, I have no stress when I cook. So I can imagine some guys feel the same way when it comes to the trade. So if you guys ever need any help, you want to reach out, um, talk to me or whatever, I have a Discord channel. I'm going to drop that in the link, and I'm also going to try to drop the pricing for all this material in here so that if you want to look and see if how your bucket matches up to mine, uh, check it out, man. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Um, again, my goal is to make these things easier for you guys, and if you guys appreciate the content, please like and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate some of the comments you guys have been leaving on my channel. Uh, the fact that some of you guys are going to the apprenticeship because you see my videos. I'm really appreciative, man. Uh, I can't say that anymore. Like, I, I really am grateful. If I've helped anybody else, you know, uh, man, it feels really good. So uh, I want to continue to do this and help other people. I know a lot of things are really depressing right now and uh, things are not easy, but if we sit together, if we work together, uh, things get that much easier. So again, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. Till next time.